And this is something that I'm now sharing for the first time because I truly believe that it can help people. The first and foremost, the most important thing is to love yourself. Okay, so when you love yourself, you have love to give. Hey Zoop family, welcome back. We are in another MCO in Malaysia, which sucks, but we're still coming to you with some of the regional heroes that we are inspired by. This person could easily take my job. She's got a massively successful cafe. She's an F&B guru. She does everything herself from operations through to marketing. Her Sugarfin is a massively successful cafe in Singapore. She's a oh, podcaster that can put me to shame. She has Arch, and there's a special meaning behind that name, which I'll let her come on to shortly. And she interviews some of the most fascinating people in Singapore and beyond. And lastly, she's a pivot expert who took on the problems that COVID caused in Singapore with the lockdown, this, you know, the circuit breaker situation, and then spun it into pop-up events and parties for people who couldn't do, which we sell the most of, which is partying and clubbing. Steph, this is basically your job offer to take my place in the Zoop family. I hope I've touched on everything that you have. I'm not even going into Cream Pie, your creative agency, because then I'll definitely get fired after this. But first of all, <laughs> It's 2021. It hasn't started for us that well, but I'm sure in Singapore it's getting better. And how are you after 2020? So, hi, I'm Stephanie, first and foremost. Um, thank you, Joseph, for doing this with me. Um, it is my pleasure and a big honor for me to have this podcast with Zook. And um, even though we're so far apart, um, let's give people a little bit of context. I've actually met Joe before in Gunting, and he was very kind to bring me around. Um, and Zook is amazing there. And that's that. So now we can go into, I guess, what I do. And um, there are different facets of my life and what I do. And to be honest with you, why I can do it is because I blame it on ADHD. ADHD is the superpower, guys. If you have it, <laughs> use it in this way. So in a way, um, I have a cafe. It's called Sugar Finn, as Joe mentioned. And um, it's a really tiny cafe, but we've built a community there. Everyone on the street is friends with each other now because of the coffee shop. And um, it's a beautiful space, and I would think it's a very cozy environment. And um, to be honest with you, I had no F&B knowledge. I went into it like thinking, well, you know, I kind of know how to market, I know how to take photos, you know, I know how to talk to people, it's going to work. And it wasn't that simple, obviously. So um, I went into it thinking I knew everything and it would work. Obviously, it didn't turn out that way, which is why we pivoted and we actually changed the brand from a juicery to sugar fin. Before it was Cold Press Juice Company and didn't really work out in Singapore. And then we started selling coffee and sandwiches and it did a lot better. So that was me pivoting. And also I had an ex who was also in the F&B industry who actually taught me the ropes. So I realized that as long as you're willing to learn, especially when it comes to small SME um, industries, for me specifically, it's food and beverage, right? So in the F&B industry, there's a lot to learn. I'm still learning and, and it's amazing. I love it. I love the, the service aspect of it. I love talking to customers. I love making the food. I love talking to us about all of it. And um, I guess I found my passion that way through trial and error and then of course like you mentioned there's also arch which is my podcast so there's also this um, podcasting i have called arch um, arch conversations so it's a little bit interesting because when i had started arch it was um fashion label and it was meant to be a capsule collection at that time and um, it did quite well so i continued doing it and then when 2020 hit um i almost had to close the cafe and in doing so i was talking to a lot of friends to people who are doing a little bit better and with positive light to shed. And one of them was the two men bagel house boys. I don't know if you heard of them, but they're really famous bagel house in Singapore. They pioneered the bagels in Singapore. So they're a bagel sandwich shop. And um, one of the co-owners, his name is Jerobon Nam. He said to me, well, Steph, I love talking to you. And I think you know a lot of people, you know, the interesting people. Why don't you just start doing podcasts? And I was thinking, you know what, why not? I can video, I can edit. And I do know a lot of interesting people and they have stories to tell. And I'm sure during coronavirus, everyone has some kind of story to tell and it would be good lessons for all of us to learn. And when I had started doing it, um, it was really, really cathartic. Um, and it became, I honestly did not expect anything from it. So I did it thinking maybe five people watch it, it doesn't matter. And it actually did really, really well. 
and we have a lot of positive feedback and so it's been continued on and on wait i digress at ADHD so the name of the podcast or this brand called arch actually came from my daughter and she was 18 months old she could not pronounce her name so her name is ara her last name is chi so she would say arch as a little kid i was like oh that's so cute and arch a r c h to me means a lot of things cuz it's anarchy it's monarchy is an architect. So I thought, hmm, this is a really great name. We can spin it a lot of ways for marketing and like merchandise and stuff. So I stuck to it. And um as for Cream Pie, it's a freelance creative agency that I have. I do freelance ID jobs or whatever creative jobs that come my way. And um so that's that for the job scope aspect. I want people to deep dive into Steph social media. You're one of the best curators that I've seen and it's not just me saying this. Thank From- you. But from, but from top to bottom you heavily you have a great inspirational content mind you're very good i've watched arch i find it really fascinating it's really real which i love you're how, the best way for me to describe you steph is you are totally unique you have a stand out personality a strong personality you're honest oh, you. and what you see is what you get which in this day and age when people are always trying to cross compare themselves or try and replicate what they've already seen before makes you stand out um you're one of the strongest recognized marketers in singapore that's no no uh word of a lie i've had about six people recommend that we sp- try and speak to you and then luckily our friend john hooked it up and we did meet in genting and it was a real pleasure because you have a very trendy cool persona you've got an amazing wit You're very fashionable and then when you came to see me in Genting you were incredibly humble and a, a huge pleasure to hang around with. It's not surprised that your podcast has done so well because your personality comes straight across in the podcast. And I watched one recently the two guys from Vino um and you 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 started it off so well saying how long you've been waiting to talk to them when in fact they're very excited to talk to you so they just become at ease almost immediately so which okay let's go step by step i really want to talk about the pivoting you did over circuit breaker with your cafe because the cafe a is that community hangout it, a yeah. lot of people rely on a community hangout especially a cafe where they get good coffee but also to meet link with colleagues friends they will have a structure to their day which is i'm going before work or i'm going at lunch or i'm going after dinner whatever then obviously circuit breaker kicked in and you had to flip so talk us through the process of how your mind worked in order to get you to these pop up events with craft beers and chill drinks and also make it a family inclusive environment So what it was was it was really really tough. So through circuit breaker we were not allowed to go to work. Well, um we were known as um frontline workers, so we were allowed to go in but you only allowed to have one staff at a time. So the the restaurant was not or the cafe was not open per se, but you can do online deliveries. So we were going one person at a time from 6 a.m. to like whatever time to just like pound out the things that we needed to do. And to be honest with you, it is my customers I need to thank deeply because they ordered and they ordered and they ordered and they started sending it to their friends and family and that was what kept our salaries going. That is the beauty of I think the shop. It it became something that everyone loved and they truly genuinely supported us because they didn't want us to fail. And that was so beautiful and even when I had decided to close the shop, I owed it to my customers to kind of lift you up and be like, "No, you know what? You just need to keep going." And um thankfully I have a very good landlord. We work something out. Um so my rental is a little bit at ease and um I had to fire some staff which was not easy but it was necessary at the time and um basically I sublet a, a bit of my space out to this amazing brand called Dearborn run by Chris Kong um Chris Kong is an amazing chef 15 year trained and um he pivoted as well he was doing a supper club in his own home but because of the lockdown he could not and therefore he started doing granola so he basically and sorry now i jump from phase 1 which was the lockdown into phase 2 and phase 2 was when you know you can go back to work and people can come and visit but only five at the time and um so he took the back space to make his granola and um his energy came in and there's this thing i don't know if you believe in it but i do it's called i it's called os- osmosis right where you kind of share energy and when i was solo and this person who comes in with this positive energy and this good vibe to share he was willing to just give out good energy and um with this OCD mentality and like such like form and like passion to do what he he does it totally made me change my mind about how i can work it was from a place where i was so depressed to was like you know what you uplift me and i'm going to go and i did the podcast with um Jeff Stable i don't know if you've heard of him he's also a street streetwear like guru 
so I did this podcast with Jeff and he was talking to me he was sharing all his energy about cash versus craft and like how to pivot and stuff like that and I was like you know what if Jeff at this stage where he's so successful and he's still fucking hustling oh sorry I cussed so then so then I will hustle too and I think it's all these people that I've that I've spoken to through the podcast and the people that I managed to meet thanks to the universe or whatever you want to call it but really it's also a mental switch in your mind to be like you know I want to be positive and then things will happen and then you when things happen you can always see it two ways right the guy coming into my shop I could have easily been okay great you're taking his space ease off my rent you know I don't want to think about it or it could be like yo this is this really great energy coming to my shop I need to be thankful there's things to learn here I will learn from him so that's the the route that I chose and in doing all that and talking to all these people and all these podcasts and all this positive energy and once my creative juices started flowing the natural thing to do was pop ups because at that point of time in singapore um because there are no clubs there are no bars um people wanted somewhere to go right because everybody still needed that drink to de stress not maybe not drink excessively overboard or whatever but you still want to hang out with your friends even if it's small groups of five So my cafe has always been a very um cozy space that was the design it was meant to be cozy it's like an extension of the living room and that's what a lot of my customers have told me and it's um a family cafe so um I start I brought I bought a fridge you know I put in craft beers I bought in a lot of local craft beers as well because we want to support the local community and I like cooking at home so a lot of my friends when I cook I was cooking a lot through through circuit breaker and they were like you should sell this you should sell this and I was like who's going to buy it though And so one thing like connected with the other and I was like you know what I'm just going to try to do a pop up and see how it goes because we're not open on weekends so it was just a way to to fluff up the revenue and I started doing the first one was nasi lemak and I was super stunned at the reaction and the number of people come through I think they sold about like 100 nasi lemaks and that's a lot for us you know I I know it may not be a lot to a lot of people but it was a lot for us and I noticed that people I expected people to come and go but I noticed that people in groups of fives stayed they stayed for like 3 hours 4 hours just like having conversation throwing back a beer they brought their kids you know they were just hanging out because i then i realized this is the new normal people find pop up places or spaces and every week they can go to a different pop up a different space and just enjoy time together and that was probably the new normal for all of us so it's okay this is this works out so i just started doing it every month and um that was how the pop up started but to be honest with you it's not just me it's really the people you choose to surround yourself with and if you choose positive people the energy will always be like electric in that sense i got i got to i got to step in there it's very interesting that you say that he came into your life at a time of down because when i watch your social media and your presence on social media it's always uplifting and i find that a positivity comes out so i've seen videos of you dancing with your daughter you're very involved involving of your daughter who is always this beautiful smiling young lady who is always almost like a life and soul of my Instagram feed um uh-huh. and a huge positivity comes across to me because I can't help but smile so then if i take that internally then i'm smiling and then i can share that with whoever's around me right so it's interesting that you say that you 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 had that difficult time it's fantastic that you recognize that someone else brought opportunity into your life through their energy and 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 you were open minded enough to say i can take this as an opportunity to learn Yeah. You 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 were talking to me um beforehand and it's something that I have a huge amount of respect for. Um you you were very candid with me before that you've spent a period of time as a single mom. Um yeah. and something that you're incredibly proud of and you're very open about. Um and you're yes. very open to talk to people and give them advice about difficulties and how you've tackled some of life's difficulties. Um it's yeah. incredibly on a it's a huge honor for us to be able to broach this conversation with you because it goes much further than skin deep and this is something i have a huge amount of respect for you for not just in the context of the situations you found your life in but the fact that you are using your experiences to help other people what what is your number one advice from the things that you have faced and specifically during 2020 in your private life because i gather it was quite an interesting year for you personally it was super interesting um so i i think everyone i mean not everyone knows my story and to be honest with you in that regard i have a very public persona but a lot of the other flip side is i'm also very private i don't know if that makes sense to people but i don't really talk about my private life Um I don't believe in airing the airing that dirty linen in public therefore I never talked about my my child's dad leaving but obviously it was quite apparent um but now that he's back it's not dirty linen anymore because I think that the way that we seamlessly 
became friends and co-parents again is a story that could motivate or help other people in the same situation but even if not in just any negative situation so this is what happened so i had a kid and her dad had left us for about a period of almost four years and last year um in the smack the middle of coronavirus he had come back when i say he had come back um he had reached out to me and um we touched base i talked to him and then my daughter is now seeing him on a weekly basis which is amazing this is something that people need to understand being a single parent is not a handicap i wouldn't say like i'm a single mom and expect you know someone to be i actually i and everyone i know who is single parents do not enjoy the sympathy right because i feel like one parent two parents same sex parents any kind of parents even if you have no parents you just need love a child just needs nurturing and love so that's that's that right but now to the point that he's back so a lot of people have actually dm'd me like private messaged me on instagram and other platforms and emails with the question how did you do it because i'm going through a divorce it's really difficult you know i am have i'm pregnant the guy just left me it's really difficult how did you do it and this is something that i'm now sharing for the first time because i truly believe that it can help people the first and foremost the most important thing is to love yourself okay so when you love yourself you have love to give and the point is not to project hate so if you harbor that hatred that anger the angst and if you keep perpetuating those thoughts and fears fears in terms of how about my future now i have a kid who's going to want me i actually get these questions you know people are like how do i be desirable again am i going to meet a man and they're just afraid so before you project your fears into the future or harbor this anger or or this guilt of the past remember that you only have the present and live ruthlessly in the present so face your current situation through your divorce do the papers do whatever you need to, whatever it is face that situation with the strongest most positive mindset you can have for your child you're the adult here right you're processing these emotions and it's the hardest on you but your child is a sponge they would absorb any form of energy you give to them so when her father had left i had never shown her anger or resentment towards him because to be very honest with you if two people part both people are to blame unless he's scum which is not my situation so i cannot talk, speak on behalf of those people but for my situation i truly believe there's blame on both ends no doubt he should not have gone for four years that's wrong right but i also believe that i'm her mother and i have the strength to raise this child on my own it's mine but i need this child to grow up with love and not my negativity which would then become might become ptsd in her growing up insecure angry or whatever so no just don't project anger don't project blame and don't just don't project and never say or call another person mean names in front of your child just don't show that kind of anger to a child they are really really absorbent and they might even project it onto their friends and peers you just don't even know that so that's one so when he had come back um as i was telling joe before very candidly that um it just felt like i was reconnecting with a long lost friend put it out there there's no romance involved it's two adults who have had a child together and both love the child and that's what we're working towards and this is something that's very important i feel like all of us work right you know what a meeting is for a meeting is to solve a problem it's a discussion between minds and you know the problem is there and there should not be anger on the table that arises no matter what and your ego should be put aside because you need to solve this problem so i think that's what co-parenting means so when he come back i just want to be a co-parent here i'm so glad to be off rid the burden of being a single parent because it's not that i'm a single mom it's more like their papers this you know rules this government things schools there's all these things that you make decisions on your own meaning that you are a sole proprietor right when there's with somebody else you have a partner now and now we can have meetings and discussions in the same way you do with work for something we love and you just want a positive outcome so we have never shouted at each other we do not i've never i never asked him about where he went and all that i don't care about the past i care about who you are today and what you want to do for my child for the future And so then it became like we always had great discussions, we talk it out, um and it's been great. We don't fight. There's not been drama at all since he returned. And my t- child has taken to him very well. Of course it was slow but steady. 
and now it's amazing. Yeah. Wow, I, I just got to say a few things. Very few render me speechless in the way that you have, in the context that you've allowed us to see inside your world. It's in no way um, superficial. It's totally stiff. And on the other side, you are offering up advice through what must have been at some points incredibly painful life to live through. But you're using that to exert great advice of positivity to people who may need help, may need advice, may not have anyone who understands what they're going through. Um, and secondly, you've really put into context some of the things that on a day-to-day -day basis we complain about that really are not that big a deal. And you've shown that if you can come out of your situation with this phenomenal, positive, outward thinking mentality, there's very little excuse for a lot of us who don't have to take into consideration not just ourselves, but also a smaller version of ourselves, someone else coming back into our life, and as you say, the public who may or may not be judging or whatever, having their impression of what's right or wrong, it you've basically tackled all of those things and just come out and said, let's make this the best for my daughter, and let's set the best possible impression to the rest of us. So I, I just got to say thank you because it's very rare for us to get the opportunity to speak to someone so purely, and and that that's a, that's an incredibly touching thing for us to listen to as well. Thank you so much for saying that. I mean, um, I don't usually take very well to compliments, but I believe affirmation is good. I actually learned that this year. I think that's something that people need to learn as well. Affirmation and compliments are very different. And what you said was from your heart and I can feel it and I thank you for that. Um, but really like, when I say it now, it's retrospect, right? It's very easy like, but of course there were times where it's like rock bottom and all that. But as you said, it's not even like people have asked me like, how do you have so much energy when we come to your shop literally people are coming in to steal my vibe like to give out good energy and it is not even a choice because if you choose to perpetuate negativity there you will stay and to be honest with you i've started reading stoic philosophy um in the past six months it's not a way to live i used to be very negative and depressed and what does that do for you to be honest nothing of course, there are days that you'll be apathetic. You want to lie in bed and do nothing, you know, like, and that's fine. But you always need to bounce back because we literally, I know it sounds as cliche as it sounds. You only have one life to live. You only have one day to live and each day you can live it to the fullest. And how would you want to live it? Hating on someone, being angry with someone, gossiping, like, I don't do all of that anymore, you know. And there's just no other way to live. And I have a child. I want her to be happy. I want her to grow up with love. You, you, yeah. you said that you learned something about affirmation this year. I learned something tonight, which is the difference in dynamic that some of the things that I've complained about, like the guy introduced us, John, I had an argument with him, you know, this week. And, and you sit down and you think, now I look back and I think, what did we gain from that? Neither of us gained anything. It was a complete waste of time. And to be totally honest, the 10 minutes before I came on this with you and I was having dinner with him, I was laughing. It, it's, it, that's the choice we make, right? You have the choice whether, as you say, the reason people say that about you, Steph, when they come to your cafe and, and they, they want to feed off your energy is because they're looking with an admiration of someone who's very happy to be herself. That's very obvious to me. Like I tried to describe earlier, you are totally unique and you're comfortable within your own skin, which is why people follow you. Don't just look at it from a social media perspective, but look at it from a life perspective. Your friends, your family, your daughter, the rest of us that look from outside in, we are following you in the context that Human beings like to be led, but they like to take it. They like to admire and they also like to learn from other people. And so everything you're going through and every time you're smiling, every time you're laughing and every time you're saying, I'm going to do this because I'm driven to do this. I'm going to open a cafe. I'm going to open a creative agency. I'm going to give it my best shot. And if it doesn't work, I'll just try again. It's something that 90% of people don't have the courage to do. And that's why it's inspiration. Um, thank you. But I also think there's this thing that I, this is my life motto. There is nothing I cannot achieve. When I say nothing, I mean like I'm 37 this year. And if you said to me, Steph, I don't think you could do a handstand. I don't think you can hike that mountain. I'm just going to do it because I'll be like, no, you can do anything you set your mind to. That's how powerful our brain is. You give like humans don't give enough credit to our brains. If you keep feeding it good things, good vibes, and that's what you will receive. You know, like so th these days I start my morning by looking out the window. I mean, once again, lucky for me, I have trees out my window. I look at the birds, I look at the leaves swaying, and I know it sounds really like funny or whatever, but I talk to the birds, you know, 
don't this is a really good life advice don't take yourself too seriously whoever you are that doesn't matter your namesake doesn't matter your job title doesn't matter how much money you have in your bag you have nothing you have something good for you you know what i mean but don't take yourself too seriously because life is short you know and everybody wants to laugh you're, you're talking to someone who on this podcast alone has been called a Mark Zuckerberg look-alike, an Andy Roddick look-alike, a Chris Martin look-alike. Like it happens to me enough. And 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 one of the the lessons I learned in life uh, from my own parents and so my my parents were um, split up, and it, it was exactly how you described it. You're not doing it, and so that's why one of the reasons I admire you so much. Like I would go to bed above the kitchen and I could just hear them screaming. And and the only kudos I can give them is at least in the early days they used to wait till I'd gone to bed, but I could still hear it. Um, and it's very difficult. It took me decades not to try and look negatively upon an argument in a relationship. Like that's it, it's done. Let's go. You know? And and yeah. it took my current partner um, to teach me a hell of a lot about how to manage these things. And I'd carry that for 30 years. So what you're basically describing is what you're you're sparing uh, Aria is is carrying that burden so she can make her own decision how she walks into those relationships instead of subconsciously being made for her. Um, I really admire, once again, that it's a word I'm using a lot today, but it's a word I genuinely mean because, uh, as I say, I've been, I've been quite moved by what you've described, but also the fact that you have taken problems. One of the things I love and one of the things I do want to ask you before we go is, there's a hell of a lot of millennials that watch the Zook podcast. You and I were probably millennial age when we started going to Zook, even younger, sneaking in illegally, partying, and then is part of the life cycle in Singapore for sure. In KL, 15 years old, it's the life cycle. People went in at 16, 17, 18, then their younger brothers went in, and then, yeah. you know, I mean, adults who were like, hey, I met my wife at Zook, Singapore, and stuff. So there's a lot of impressionable people out there who don't know what the hell just happened in 2020. They're still shocked because I think a lot of people thought, hey, 2021, it's going to reset. We're back. But I mean, in Malaysia, we're even worse than we were last year. What's your advice to that get up and go attitude, which is there's a problem. I'm going to navigate it. I'm going to smash through it. I'm going to go around it, but I'm going to find a a solution one way or another. What would be your advice to someone who has faced real difficulties in, in 2020, 2021? And instead of taking the approach you have, which is seeing a problem and navigating around it or through it or smashing past it and taking in and saying, right, there's something good happening. I'm going to bring that in and I'm going to push this rainbow light eyes onto my problem and I'm going to make it a better place. One of the biggest and saddest things that I see with many young people is they look at failure and they say, I'm done. But it might not be a failure. And, and one of the best descriptions I ever heard from it was my ex-boss who said, problems are not stop signs they're speed bumps they slow you down but you can keep going um what would be your advice to how you approach these problems with this positive mindset because as you say it's all up here right to me a problem or a failure i would like to um challenge what you said you said a lot of failures are not failures i think there is you have to have enough self-awareness to understand what is real failure and what is a lesson do you know what I mean? Like a breakup could be a failure, but it's also a lesson. A, a failed business, at some point, you need to know when to cash out, right? It's also a failure, but there are lessons through growing a business and it not working out. Take those lessons and do something else. And as for my get go mentality, understanding the different types of failures and then using that to motivate yourself to do better next time. You know, this lesson can actually help me in another way as you said a lot of people just say oh i failed i'm done no you're not done you know what you're young you're 40 years old you're still young 50 60 doesn't matter you can start at any point you can flip a switch and do a different thing at any point of your life but if you choose to once again perpetuate the energy of failure that's where you will stay and if you don't challenge your brain you get stagnated and you wear like you look old that's when you start wearing out but if you choose different failures at different lessons and be self-aware enough to know this one i can still work on it i can still do something with it or look at it from a different perspective always if you're so stuck like when we have issue we're just surrounded by the issue right step outside of yourself take a three minute break and just imagine you're filming a movie step outside of yourself and be objective about the genuine situation look at it as if you were third party and your friend giving you the best advice they can and then go back into the problem. I think that's where I find true serenity and and, and the way to move forward, you know, to sometimes step out of yourself and your ego and your pride. 
So yeah. I, I just want to ask you a few questions before you go. Number one, can you recommend some reading? You said you've been doing a lot of reading. Yes. Philosophy. So, what do you recommend? Stoic philosophy um, is in for, is from the 2000 BCs, is from the Romans, and um, there are quite a few Stoic philosophers. But the one that I speaks true to me, and to be honest with you, saved my life in 2020, is Marcus Aurelius. So he's this Roman emperor. I shall not go into it. It's not very exciting. I mean, his life is very exciting to me, but he wrote this book called Meditations. But not it's not what the title suggests. So please don't judge a book by its cover. So it's called Meditations. But it's really little light bites that you can then di digest yourself. You can stop at the first page. You can stop at the middle page or the last page. It doesn't matter. Just pick up that book. I would ask anyone to pick up that book. And even if you're a really good place in life, it will still change your life for the better. Because we can always do better. So Meditations by Marcus Aurelius. So I read that book. And then I listened to podcasts on his life. Because I don't want to read biographies. You know, years and times and it. So... Um, I listened to his life and I was like, you know what, if he could go through all this and at the end of his life, these are his teachings, it's amazing. Yeah, I would. I will not review too much, but that book is really, really good. Definitely, we're going to put up some more information about that. So thank you so much. My second thing is, when I or anyone else hits up Singapore from Ve the team in Vegas who's watching this, the team in Malaysia is watching this, team in Hong Kong is watching this, Sugarfin, what must we order? You've got to tell us. What What is the number one? Um, well, there's two. Um, in Singapore, in Singapore, we call the experts Ang Mo. So, <laughs> the expats love the chopper. So, everything in my shop is basically named after movies or pop culture. So, the chopper is uh, because of Arnold Schwarzenegger, and there's a movie he said, Get to the chopper. Get to the chopper. So, chopper is like a helicopter, right? So, it's a chopper. It's basically corned beef hash with um, caramelized onions. That one's really good. And um, the hebe, which is um, ham, egg, bacon, and hash brown. Yeah. So just for the reference, Chopper was in Predator, one of the best films of all time. By the you do watch it too. It was so funny. I've been, I've actually been to see him in KL do motivational speeching, and he's a phenomenal yeah. human being. I'm not sure saying he's like a phenomenal human being. But I digress. Yeah. Next thing. Who have you got coming up on Arch? On which podcast? The first podcast you Actually, recommend to watch? Okay, the, the one, okay, it depends. So some is about emotional healing, some is about um, inspiration, but the one that everyone needs to watch is definitely the Jeff Staple one, because that's the one that actually pushed me out of my, you know, misery as well, because he was so inspirational and so much to teach. That's a really good one. But the one that's upcoming is actually um, a, a, someone who works at Zook. In KL, and you've actually interviewed him as well, I think. Blink, it's got to be yes. Blink. Yes, so Blink is coming on my podcast. Blink is an OG man. I love that guy. Yeah. He is. He has the same mindset as you, you know. Yes, like, not, we are very, very similar. He told us about the fact, and Blink is a, a celebrity, is a legend in Kuala Lumpur, right? And and yeah. not many people knew that Blink had three jobs. To pursue his life as a DJ, he took on three jobs, which is like super inspo. Um, yeah, Blink and OG will definitely look forward to that. I love the guy. Send him my love. Um, and the last thing is, just tell us a little bit about Cream Pie. Obviously named after the Wu-Tang Clan. Cash yes. rules everything around me. Please invest everything. Yeah, cream I'm pie, gonna split yeah. this into two. Number one, tell us what to look out for from Cream Pie. And then last of all, tell us your favorite Wu Tang Clang lyric. Wow, that's a good one. Um, so for Cream Pie, we're actually gonna design a restaurant really soon. And um we hope it's gonna be good. So we're gonna do the branding and um, interior design for um, a new restaurant, but I cannot disclose it yet. The client's not ready. And um as for my favorite Wu-Tang Clan song, it would be Shimmy Shimmy Ya. Yeah. You know that one, right? Of course, sure who you know does that. You can't, you can't, like, you can't say you like hip-hop and not like that. So I don't know if the lyrics are too raw to say it out. Go, go, go. Um, yeah, but it's the entire song. I can basically rap the entire song. So The last question, Steph, which I think will sum up this entire interview is, what is your motto for 2021? Um, I actually said this to all my friends. New year, old me. I don't believe now at my age, I don't believe in making resolutions and breaking them. So I don't believe in resolutions. I believe in, this is a new year, but I'm still the old me. But I was keep improving to be a better version of this person. That is the motto for this year. And basically just be happy with the person you already are and you don't have to change so much. Just keep, keep, keep working at improving yourself. Correct. Well, some people are not happy. Then take yourself out of that place. 
you know, which whichever way you can find help, find help somehow, and not just you know be by yourself and just be apathetic all the time. So yeah. Steph, first and foremost, thank you so much for your time. You are a superstar. You. you have guests downstairs playing cards. There, yeah. you're gonna have some catch up. Can you hear them? But the, the, the most important thing I have to say is, um, as I say, I've done nearly 100 of these now. Um, and I've interviewed some of my heroes, like some of the DJ, international DJs that 20 years ago were paying yeah. to, to buy tickets. Yeah, yeah. But there is not another one that uh, has been as emotionally profound as this. Um, we, we've spoken to people about sexual harassment. We've spoken, spoken to people about cyberbullying. We've spoken about a lot, but not many that have as honest and as as i said inspirational story as you have shared with us so thank you so so much for adding no value to our lives and one last thing i would like to add is if you've been through any form of pain then be vulnerable not to the point where you you've been make you'll be made use of but vulnerability actually helps other people by being vulnerable and open you will help other people most definitely yeah. Steph, thank you so much. It's been an Thanks, absolute pleasure. Joseph. Thanks and, for the uh, catch-up. No, and I cannot wait to come and, and, and check out your cafe. I will definitely come in and uh, I will go for the chopper 100%. Yeah. <laughs> of course you would. Of course you would. <laughs> All right. Take care, Steph. Good All our love. Thank you and good luck in 2021. Thank you. You too. Ciao. Bye. Yeah.